lights are on. We're getting ready to go. Race action underway and a good launch from Bobby Fong up the inside. Cameron Bovier wow. has put it on the deck after a dramatic race so far for Cameron Bovier. That's his second time on the asphalt here at Indianapolis. Fong with his head down as he comes to the stripe. It's going to be Bobby Fong with his second win of the season. You're locked into the Moto America AMA FIM North American Road Race Championship from Indianapolis, Indiana. It's round eight of nine for 2020 at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. It's Moto America Superbikes at the Brickyard. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Hono Superbike. I'm Greg White, standing alongside two-time world champ Jason Pridmore. Now, Jason, as we just saw yesterday, was a really weird day in Hono Superbike racing. Yeah, it was really strange to see so many red flags at what would arguably be probably our safest track that we go to. Yeah, let's take a look at some things that happened yesterday because we're going to kick it off with that whole Cameron Bobier situation. He's crashed once all year. He's crashed three times already this weekend. It's just been a real little bit of uh, bad luck for him. He'll be firing back today. And Bobby Fong, he doubles up, Jay. Both times this year that this guy's been putting pressure on Cam, Cam's gone down. Bobby Fong's done a tremendous job getting two race wins. And our new contender, Lorenzo Zanetti here from Italy. If it wasn't for one mistake yesterday, this new bike with this team could have been on the podium up front, not in third where they ended up. Well, this is our second race of three this weekend, and you can see that riders are on the grid. So let's get right down to the third member of our broadcast team, Hannah Lopa. Hi, Hannah. Greg, yesterday we saw Bobby Fong make his way to the sixth podium of the season and his second victory. Bobby, knowing that there are two races today, how does that bolster your confidence? Oh, you know, it's good, but, uh, you know, yesterday didn't mean too much. We have two more races uh, today to, to finish strong and looking forward to a, a good battle with these guys. At times they're real close and, you know, it's, uh, it, we're in a, we have a pretty good strategy. We know we have uh, some good race pace and we're going to do what we do. Best of luck out there. Let's get over to Jamie Howe. Well, and out here on the grid, there are a couple of injuries to update on. We'll start off with the number 33 of Kyle Wyman aboard that Ducati. He did go over yesterday. The bike, though, just minor damage to it, things you would ex expect from a tip over for Kyle himself. He did injure his neck when he hit it on the windscreen. He said it's really more of a nuisance than anything else. If we go a little further up the grid to Cameron Bobier, we saw him have his issues. You guys talked about it in the open of the show. They did have to put a new frame on that bike. Add to it, they had some issues in the morning warm-up with the sensor, so they're a little bit of unknown going into the race today. And then if you look down the grid, there are a cup, there's one rider who is not here, and that is the number 11 Westby Racing Yamaha of Matthew Skoltz. He is at the hospital where he's receiving further evaluation. He will not race in either of the races today. Hopefully we can keep you updated. Greg. All right, Jamie, thanks so much. Yeah, so Matthew Skoltz being observed at the hospital. He'll get another night stay there, but nothing, nothing that he has is anything life-threatening. It's all about that ankle and that foot. All right, so let's take a look at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Jason, I like this track. It's relatively flat, 2.62 miles long. It's got a good blend of right and left. But when you talk about places to pass, there's some good corners and that long straightaway. Here's the Cardo track hotspots. Yeah, great. We come down that famous front straightaway into turn one, a fast turn that they're going to be going down three gears for back to third on these super bikes. Then they're going to drop one more as they go into turn number two and three there. That's all going to be second gear. After we come through the turn six through nine section, we're going to be rolling down a back straightaway into turn 10, a corner that cuts back on itself pretty severely, as does turn 11, the right-hander right after this. But it's really all about that run onto the front straightaway, Greg. When you get to this area of the track, 14 through 16, this can make or break you. This is where our winner from yesterday, Bobby Fong, was so strong getting through those final three turns and good drive onto that front straightaway all the way to the, to the yard of bricks. The Cardo track hot that spots. We've seen some spectacular passing and racing here at Indianapolis Motor Speedway, including this guy, Italian Lorenzo Zanetti. He was fastest in morning warm-up. Can he make it on the podium two days in a row? Today's Superbike coverage is sponsored by Dunlop, the official tire of the Moto America Championship Series, and brought to you in part by Geico Motorcycle. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on motorcycle insurance.
Superbike race coverage is sponsored by Ponos, the apparel brand that promotes talent within the adrenaline sports realm. We're back at Indianapolis Motor Speedway, the infield road course where Hono Superbikes have done their sighting lap and are on their warm-up lap. Let's take a look at the starting grid. There's been a shift, of course, in that grid because of the absence of one rider. But Tony Elias, our pole sitter with Zanetti and Bobby Fong on the front row. Yep, then we go back to row two. Cameron Bobby, Jake Gagne, and Kyle Wyman up on the second row. Back to row number three, Greg David Anthony, Josh Herring, Cam Peterson, good to see him out there today. Andrew Lee, Michael Gilbert, and Alex Dumas, some of our super stock competitors. Although Michael Gilbert's on his super bike this weekend. Travis Wyman, Corey Alexander, Gerardo on row five, Ashton Yates, Coffey, and Daniela Lewis. A little bit further back, Max Flinders, Trevor Daly, Jeffrey Perk, and then rounding up the field is Giannato and Sam Rodrigo. So riders coming onto the front straightaway, the long front straightaway. Jason, we talked about this briefly yesterday. This is one of those racetracks where you've got to get the start right. If you jump the start, if Moto America deems you to have jumped the start, you're going to have to come in and ride the entire length of this hot pit yeah, lane. And it would absolutely destroy This is the longest one we you. see, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and yeah. the pit lane speed limiter begins right at the line at the beginning of this long pit lane. So it's really important for these riders to pay attention and be locked in and focused for the start of this race. And I like this run down to turn one here. I like a little bit faster turn one, rather than everybody having to come to a stop, which is nice. But then they get into those turn two and three sectors, and you've really got to position yourself in a good safe spot to get through those first 30, 40 seconds of the race. So Tony Elias looking for a good launch and lead this field into turn number one. Bobier trying to get another one of his now signature good starts from row two. Lights are off, clutches are out, and we're on our way. Bobby and it looked Fong. like a crap. Bobby Fong, M4X star Suzuki with a good launch. But Tony Elias has got the run into turn one. Fong with position. Elias sweeps around the outside, and it's M4X star Suzuki's 1-2. And how about Kyle Wyman from the second row? Jumps up there into third early. Zanetti's going to slot into fourth. And then you got the two Yamahas. Cameron Bobier this morning didn't do a lap. He was out and in. So. These first few laps are going to be kind of test runs for him to see how his bike feels. It's going to take him maybe a lap or two to get comfortable. Yeah, so Cameron Bobier on the number one back there with Cameron Peterson and the number two of Josh Heron. Look at these M4X Tarsukis. There goes Zanetti. The 87 moves his way up into third spot around Kyle Wyman. So trying to set sail after these this lead duo, Warhorse, HSBK Racing, Ducati, New York's 33-year-old Lorenzo Zanetti from Italy. Yeah, and I think that, you know, right now, Bobby Fong's got a much better start than he did yesterday. Elias looks over his shoulder. He's not going to challenge his teammates as they go down into turn 10. So Zanetti saw that happening. As you can see, Gagne now has gone by Kyle Wyman as well. Heron trying to ride around the outside of Bobier. Let's see if he makes that pass, Dick. He does. So like I said, the number one right now, I, I, I believe Greg's on a little bit of a recon, just trying to figure out his bike, make sure it's good from yesterday, because we saw him in and out of the pits this morning. So he's going to take things as they come, and probably by lap four, lap five, maybe even sooner than that if he feels comfortable. You'll see that number one moving forward. So Cameron Bobier, oh, sorry, Jamie. Cameron Bobier is moving backwards, Jamie. Well, I talked to Richard Samboli this morning, and yesterday for the race starting from the second row, they made some compromises and said that the race start was just as important as all of the laps that followed. Today, they went back on that a little bit. They, they changed the geometry of the bike, so the start wouldn't be nearly as strong, but Cameron would be able to get into a rhythm, and that's really what we're seeing unfold issue that he had this morning was in the IMU sensor. So that's what tells the bike when it's in lean, when it's accelerating, decelling. Really all drive rider aids are based off of that sensor. He didn't have that this morning. So that's what they're trying to sort out. Yeah, and that's a huge, huge issue with the motorcycle, the IMU, all stock motorcycles, these thousands come with them these days, these higher end sport bikes. And just like Jamie said, Jay, it, it, it really it's almost tied into every single electronic strategy there is because it senses a lot of things. And it was dinged up in the crash yesterday. They plugged it in. So Bobier, not his usual quick starter self in this one. It's like, don't count him out, Jason, because it might be that Cameron Bobier is sorting through what this bike feels like right now. Absolutely. New forks, new frame, new everything on that number one. So, And, and without the, the benefit of being able to do a single real lap this morning under any kind of race condition is going to just, that's what this is right now. It's a practice session for him for the first three or four laps. Plus, Greg, 
Uh, he's got Jake Gagne, who's second in the points, a couple up in front of him. He'll be keeping an eye on that. Not that points right now are real close, but he doesn't want to make any more mistakes, doesn't want to have anything else bad happen to him. Gagne yesterday was moving forward, and he's a lot closer to the front again today. Now this Ducati in third. Let's see if he can get in the draft. With Tony Elias in second in draft by as they get to down to the, to the yard of bricks here. Going down into turn one. You can see Zanetti's pulled out of the draft. Now he's on the left side of Tony as they go down into turn number one. So Lorenzo Zanetti going up the inside. They're side by side. Is there room in there? Zanetti with his eyes forward. And he'll take over second spot. So on lap number three of 17, as Tony Elias looks like he had a notion, he doesn't get it done. But, Jay, what's very interesting about today specifically is that we showed up this morning with a lot of fog and cloud cover. Hannah. How much different does it feel out there compared to yesterday? Greg, it's only 64 degrees out right now, which is about 10 degrees cooler than temperatures we saw yesterday. Also 91% humidity. You can see the layer of fog over the track, so it'll be interesting to see how that affects rider visibility and tire degradation. Speaking of tires, everyone is on the same compounds as yesterday, front and rear, with the exception of two riders changed the rear up today, Kyle Wyman and Andrew Lear on that medium compound rear. Okay, so... The other thing that's really encouraging right now is Tony Elias. If you remember yesterday, Greg, we talked about how at the beginning of the races he has struggled on new rubber, and right now he's able to kind of keep these guys in tow. Josh Heron with the fastest lap of the race there in fifth, and you can see Cameron now is starting to kind of get his groove back in to things here. I'm looking up on our screen. Cameron's already ran a couple of fastest first splits up for himself. These guys haven't got away. Our group is a lot closer. But how about Josh Heron on this BMW? He runs 37.2 that last Third. time through. So Josh Heron, number two, doing a great job today. Of course, sponsored by Fresh and Lean on the weekend. Getting that dialed in, the possibility of him being in this series next season. Josh Heron coming to the fore with that sponsor, Fresh and Lean. So Heron trying to hold on on that Shivey Racing BMW. Didn't have a great race yesterday in terms of the amount of time from the leader, but it was all about that valuable data. And Heron right now just holding on in tow to these front four with Cameron Bobier, Cameron looks comfortable, Jay, but it's hard to tell with Cameron Bobier's riding style when he's actually pushing super hard. He's got to feel really good right now that these guys haven't just jumped away from him. And we're looking at Cameron Bobier going fastest lap of the race last time through 37-1. Let's keep in mind, qualifying was 36.9. We've seen Cameron go 36-6 this weekend. With each lap he has underneath his belt, he's going to have more and more confidence. We know how strong he's going to continue to be, but nobody is really pressed and got away so far this morning. Yesterday, I believe the quickest lap of the race was 37-1. We've seen that already from Cam, 37-2 from Heron. So the track is obviously fast this morning, and uh, we've got a group of six super bikes up in the front right now. Yeah, the fastest lap of the race, which is also the fastest Hono Superbike race lap record around Indianapolis Motor Speedway was set by Zanetti yesterday at a 137.189. So far, it's been 37.189 by Cameron <laughs> Bobier on lap number three. This lap, but he looks like he's losing touch. Now, one thing I can tell you about Josh Heron, the rider in fifth spot, if you go back and look at the top speeds that are recorded during the entire weekend, Josh Heron's BMW has been right there with the Ducati of Zanetti. I mean, they've only been a couple tenths of a mile per hour off each other. So when it comes to outright speed on that BMW, Josh Heron's got it at this particular spot. You can see a little bit of adjustment by Josh Heron on his brake lever. Yeah, and this guy's done such a great job this year on the BMW, and we've seen him just keep chipping away. And he doesn't stop working, does Josh Heron. He keeps chipping away at this, this lead group all the time on a bike that we haven't really seen in the paddock. Obviously, shibe has been around for a couple years, but to see him being able to mix it up with the big budget guys that you see right now, that number two, working hard right now. It goes 37.145, quicker than yesterday's fastest lap. And you can see the bike getting loose, Greg Greg, as he tips it into turn four. You can see a lot of movement from the rear of that bike. This morning during the 20 minute warm up session, Josh Heron, you talk about him never quitting the work. He was still trying out new springs, even though the racetrack was so different this morning. It was a lot cooler. The fog was still very heavy in the air. He said, we, we know what they do. We just don't know if they're going to translate to the race conditions. And so they were still trying to figure that out with just about 45 minutes to go to race time. But that team is still very much developing. And that's what they're doing as Bobby Fong continues to lead the way on the M4X Star Suzuki. Lorenzo Zanetti, his second race in Hono Superbike here in the United States on the Warhorse HSBK Racing Ducati New York entry. That motorcycle was in Italy in Ducati Corsa. 
as a full World Superbike spec motorcycle just a couple of weeks ago. They made some minor changes to it to make it Moto America legal, the biggest of which is the stock gearbox. So when you look at Hono Superbikes in Moto America, the distinct difference between one of them, it, between a World Superbike spec motorcycle and what we have here, is that we're required, required to run the stock gearbox because these are production motorcycles. They start off as a production motorcycle, the same you can buy off the showroom floor. Then you have Tony Elias in third, Jake Gagne in fourth, Josh Heron and Cameron Bobier with Cam Peterson adrift behind them. So this is the racing that we expect to see here at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Not a very technical racetrack, but Jason, a point to shoot. And you can see Bobby Fong really start to lift the motorcycle up, get it on the meat of the tire, and then pull the trigger, which is his throttle. It's pretty wild when you go to a track that's as flat as Indy because you start to think that it's, things are going to be kind of easy as far as setup goes, but this place offers so many different types of corners. As you can see, Andrew Lee's pulled his bike into the pits on the left. They've been having some shifting issues with the number 14 all weekend. But when you have a very flat track like this, setup can be absolutely crucial. We're used to seeing tracks with some camber and stuff like that. This track, I love the layout of it. I've never got to actually ride this one, Greg, but I do like the layout and I like the passing opportunities that it, that it shows. There's a lot of encouragement right now from the number 24. I, th this is the closest we've seen Tony through six laps all year long. And, uh, and look at Heron. He's trying to roll around the outside right now up Ganya. He's close enough. One thing that Josh does in this last little sector, he gets into the, the last right, turn 15. He gets in there a little hotter and it puts him over to the left-hand side, but he doesn't seem to sacrifice too much drive by doing it. We're coming up into that section now and he's going to, you know, right now he's actually just having to go the pace. See how he gets over to the left side of the track a little bit more? He's, he's, You're talking about the number two of The Heron. number two, Josh Heron, kind of shoves him a little bit too tight for that last left. That one did hurt his drive onto the front straightaway. Yeah, but last time by the stripe, and they came across the yard of bricks. Heron has been credited with the fastest stop of the race so far, 37-1, as Tony Elias gets around the Ducati of Zanetti. So Elias all of a sudden is finding something, getting more comfortable with the bike. We've heard this a couple times so far in the second half of the season that as the fuel load drops on this motorcycle, Tony Elias is, oof, a little bit of a mistake there from Tony, but as the fuel load drops and the oh. tires get a little bit worn out, he gets more comfortable, but that is a big problem right there. Well, you're going to see what ended up happening there. Tony wanted to roll through the middle of that corner a little bit faster, and Bobby Fong just wasn't quite as quick. As you can see, Heron's going to try to roll around the outside of Gagne. He's going to make this pass oh. before they get to that next right. Unbelievable move from Heron. But what it did is it slowed Tony down just enough, as you can see the pass on the left here for second place. Slowed him down just enough that when, when he got on the gas, he was probably a little bit below the RPMs he's been normally coming out of turn four. And when he screwed the throttle on, a little bit of torque curve on the edge of the tire set the bike sideways. Josh Heron up to fourth. So Tony Elias in second place, now trying to make up the gap to Bobby Fong. Jamie. Tony Elias, yesterday during the race, they did a shock change during that long red, and they mistakenly put on a wet weather shock that was just way too soft to race in. Today, they fixed that mistake, obviously. They kept the front end setup that he was so happy with that helped him get that pole position. But then they went to Bobby Fong's rear setup, and he was super encouraged in the morning warm-up, and you see the results right now. That's the benefit of having a two-rider team, isn't it, Jason? When no, you get absolutely. to bounce information off of each other, and having a nice open garage like that can make a huge difference. Onto the front straightaway, Zanetti not even bothering with the draft of the Suzuki. So Zanetti, no, Tony oh, Elias. Really good into turn one, and you can see Tony moved over to the left-hand side of the track to prevent Zanetti from trying to draft him. And uh, and when Zanetti finally did get up alongside of him, Tony just let off the lever. Now, this is where we saw Tony just now kind of rolling into the back of Bobby Fong right in the middle of this corner. Now, it's, yeah, it was a lot better. That's just an adjustment made from one lap to the next. Still a lot of movement. And when you think about where this team has been from the beginning of the year, now they've got both their riders up in that front group. But that was the showcase I was talking about on a point and shoot type of corner versus a rolling through corner. Bobby Fong is slowing down so he can get on that gas. And that is different from what Tony Elias wants to do because that particular corner has created this gap that we see two laps in a row now. Yeah, no question. And, uh, and, and it, there could be a number of different reasons for that as far as setups of the motorcycles and things go. Bobby's just controlling that apex speed and getting it stopped and getting it out of the corner, point and shooting, as you say. I talked to Bobby earlier. He said he's so happy with yesterday's setup. They didn't really make any changes at all. They've been trying to find the perfect setup for this motorcycle all season, throwing big changes at it, but he really just wanted some consistency. In talking to his rider coach, Josh Hayes, he said, you know, Bobby is really strong in a lot of sections of this track, especially the third sector, but he thinks he has what it takes to replicate yesterday's results, especially with how confident he's been feeling. 
Yeah, that's really important. I mean, it's, and Bobby Fong, even though he didn't want to admit it, is really still coming back from injury, to a wrist injury. So he continues to get stronger. Oh, that's going to be Alex Dumas. Alex Dumas is down, just trying to figure out what turn that might be. That's an M4X Star Suzuki, a stock 1,000 spec motorcycle for Dumas. So it looks like he is down. He was in 14th spot, I believe. So it looks like that might have been a high set. Oh, oh, pass for second place. Zanetti up into second around Tony Elias. And Zanetti, at, talking to Lorenzo Zanetti last night, Jason, the thing he told me was after he made that mistake in race number one, he said, look, when Cameron Bobier is not up front, anyone has a chance to win this race. I knew that the opportunity was there, and I made a mistake, and he was hoping to put himself in this position today. Bobier is still there. He's in sixth spot, but he hasn't been aggressive in making any moves. His, his next guy in line is his teammate, Jake Gagne, who, by the way, is the one in this championship keeping Cameron away from that number one plate. And here you go. Tony did the same thing this time. He went over to the left side, but Zanetti got a little bit better run down that front straightaway and was able to just take that position. Tony's still trying to get in there a little bit deeper. You see his bike going a little bit sideways. Zanetti makes that pass pretty clean. He's going to run wide, Greg. Tony looked like he probably went back up underneath him, but Zanetti had the position as they went into turn two. And I think as far as Cam goes, this has got to be encouraging. Nobody's really got away. We're about halfway done with this race, and I wouldn't be surprised to see him start to get himself uh, to, to move forward here real soon. Halfway point of this one, about nine laps remain in this race. Bobby Fong leading the way. Fastest lap at lap four, accredited to Josh Heron, a 137-145, which resets the track record in a race at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Zanetti trying to catch a draft. We know that that Ducati is extremely strong and fast, putting up trap speed times oh. of 188. Cameron looked like he was in a little bit wide there. You can see just the slightest gap now between the third and fourth place riders. And, oh, Gagne goes up underneath Heron there. So, there, you know, Gagne can sense that there's a little bit of a gap starting to form. He wanted to get through on Heron, and he did. Now it's going to be Cameron Bobier trying to get by Heron as well to try to keep this lead group from breaking away too far. Yeah, you're looking at the lap times of 37-1 for the Shibe Racing BMW, they're in kind of uncharted territory in that speed. And there was a question in my mind of how long would the tires hold up underneath Josh Heron with the current setup they had. This is as fast as they've gone all weekend long. So when you have that kind of speed, Jason, all of a sudden you can uncover some issues with the setup of the motorcycle. But Fong, M4X Star Suzuki continues to lead the way. Zanetti has now closed up on the back of Bobby Fong. But in a racetrack that seems to suit the GSX-R1000 riding style of Bobby Fong, a more point-and-shoot, get it up on the meat of the tire. Fong's able to control this pace. If you remember yesterday, that last right-hander they just came out of, I was making comment about how Bobby's bike seems like it finishes a little bit better there. Today, Zanetti's bike looks like it turns just as well as that GSX-R1000 in front of him. So it's going to be interesting to see as the race winds down. You can see what it's really prevented is Bobby, Bobby breaking away in that last sector like we saw. Zanetti's going to be close enough this time by, Greg, to get that draft you're gonna see him pull out to the left here in a minute I believe uh, maybe in one of the next coming laps because he is there now and really the last sector Zanetti looks much better today than he did yesterday yeah at this point if you're Lorenzo Zanetti Jay do you really push the issue do you have pace Zanetti is looking all around actually as he was going into that corner you can see his eyes diverted from the racetrack he seems very comfortable at this point yeah. and Gagne now on the back of Tony Elias so Elias could fall victim to a fast 32. So there goes Jake Gagne, Monster Energy Attack Performance Yamaha, our second place in points with Matthew Skulch from Westby oh. Racing not being in this one. Tony got a false neutral there. He was trying to get the bike into gear. You could see his left foot searching for a gear, and uh, Gagne was able to roll around. Once he started to see that gap, he's really stepped up his pace as Gagne. I saw him on the way in this morning here at the track. He felt really confident. He felt like that they had uncovered a small issue that he had during the race yesterday, and I believe in warm-up he got that kind of sorted. You're right about Zanetti. He looks really comfortable, but when you watch him go through this next series of turns, that left and into this right, you watch how he can kind of come off of there in the same exact spot on the track that Bobby Fong is. Yesterday he was about four or five feet uh, left, uh, a little bit wider. So, uh, but this time through, Bobby did open up that gap. So, yeah, it's just been an accordion, accordion. at this point. Yep. With Bobby Fong controlling the pace with all the pressure on behind him, he's listening to 1,000cc motorcycles screaming at 16,000 RPM behind him. 
and Fong coming on the front straight to complete another lap. His head down, Zanetti. Boy, it doesn't look like that Ducati has been making tremendous inroads on the straightaway. That particular time, looks like Zanetti was able to make up, I would say, six or seven bike lengths. But you keep in mind yesterday, Zanetti said he's still getting used to the tires here that we, that we run, the Dunlop tires here in Moto America. So he realizes that maybe right now nobody's getting away. And what happened yesterday, Greg, when he took the lead was we saw that the lap times kind of went up a little bit. He said the lap times were a little easier maybe following Bobby, and that's what he's doing right now. He hasn't really been pressured from behind Although just a two laps ago, Gagne did the fastest lap of the race, 37 flat, trying to catch back up. And you can see Bobier now going to work. He's got by Heron. He's got by Tony. Can he keep the bike turned down here? He can. So there's, there's your defending champ. He's up to fourth place now. And you can see how just getting into turn six a little bit wrong threw him off in seven and eight. Gets it back on line for nine as he drives down the back straightaway. And he's going to go after these front three now. Jason, you mentioned that Zanetti looks so much more comfortable today, and that bike looks like it's turning just as well as Bobby's, and you're 100% right. He was not comfortable with yesterday's setup at all. They made some geometry changes to the front for corner entry and stability, and he said it helped tremendously during warm-up. It also helps him a lot to have some of his crew members from Italy here with him. They've been working together for years, and they've got a great rapport, and they just want to improve every session together. Hannah, I just jumped into their pit area and asked them what was the biggest change that they focused on overnight, and they very confidently in the Italian manner said, just the rider. He's better today. <laughs> <laughs> the Italian way. Yeah, Zanetti, of course, the test rider for the World Superbike program. So when he makes changes to the motorcycle, he's been involved with that V4R program since the very beginning. So Zanetti knows with his crew how to finagle their way around this motorcycle. The hardest part after you do all the laps yesterday as a rider, and then you make these changes, you had warm up to make the changes, because that last lap through again, he was on a tighter line and he looked a little bit more tidy and comfortable. The lap prior, he, we saw a couple little bit, bit of mistakes, running a little bit wide, letting that gap increase. Uh, is, is just getting back into a different type of rhythm. Once you've done so many laps like they did yesterday in race conditions, your body almost kind of remembers the things that you did from the day before. You've got to break that, that mold because the team has made changes to make the bike better. So that's what I'm seeing out of Zanetti right now. He's still able to kind of hold into that spot. So looking at the times, Greg, we're still way faster at this point in the race than we were yesterday with five to go. 37 ones back to this guy. 37 five for Bobier the last time through. So Bobby Fong is really trying to split these guys up. He just did his fastest lap of the race on lap 12 here this last time pass. And you can see Bobby's bike getting a little bit, uh, Tony Elias' bike rather, getting sideways into turn 10. And by the way, this race is so fast. Jake Gagne on lap number 10. A 137.045. So now he owns the race lap record here at Indianapolis Motor Speedway with five to go. So is Gagne going to be able to keep up the pace and close the gap to Zanetti and get his first win of the season? We know Lorenzo Zanetti would like nothing better than to come here with a full-blown superbike. We knew he wanted to be competitive, but a race win? This would be an incredible accomplishment from the journeyman, Lorenzo Zanetti. Bobby Fong's race pace at this point, so consistent, Jason. I mean, unbelievable. You're talking about drifting off just a couple tenths of a second during the entire race. Yeah, but this is what you do. You've grounded out, you've grinded out those mid laps, and you can see now 36.8 from the Italian there. Zanetti in second goes quickest lap of the race, quicker than qualifying, actually, Greg, on lap 13. So he is legitimately just getting used to what tire wear feels like. Still has a lot of rubber up underneath him right now. Very confident. His bike looks solid underneath him. But the thing is, that's why these two guys have opened up that gap. A 136.825. So now the race lap record goes to Zanetti. And by the way, that was quicker than the qualifying time from Tony Elias on Friday. Incredible, right? I mean, yeah. what are we talking about here with Lorenzo Zanetti? He doesn't know these Dunlops all that well. Yeah, is he going to be able to manage it? Now, Jason, let me, let me turn the train of thought here for a second. If we look at the top two guys and what we were seeing from Bobby Fong, where do you think Fong, if he's got a place, is he vulnerable that Zanetti can capitalize on to make a pass for the lead? Well, to be fair, Zanetti's just improved his motorcycle so much through this last sector that it's going to make Bobby vulnerable down the front straightaway. You're going to see they've got two back markers in front of, them right, right, uh, front of them right now. This is a horrible place to catch these guys, too, by the way, going into the chicane. So this is going to close up. Maybe Ganya can get to the back. This could give Zanetti a good run. These two guys here are just in their own battle. Perk and Verderico. Verderico's looking back, pulling over to the left. That's a good move on his part. 
Yeah, I think that Zanetti is not going 100% throttle on the straightaway just yet. I think he's holding something in reserve. Why play that card if you think Bobby, Bobby Fong is going to be able to drive on him? But is Zanetti going to go for it now? No, no. No, he's too far back, but that really helped Gagne. That really helped Jake get back on the back of these guys. And now he's really going to put his head down to see if he can go with these two. But Zanetti, I really feel, Greg, he hasn't been pressured from back. Nobody's gone by him. So it'll be interesting to see if, if Gagne can get close enough and take a shot at Zanetti if it changes his plan. I feel like Zanetti's been kind of sitting there waiting. He knows they've made those improvements. And I think he feels like he can draft that Suzuki at the line if he can get through that last sector a little bit better than he did yesterday. You mentioned the problem that Gagne had yesterday. The issue is that these bikes have way more power than what they're able to use. And just the riding style of Jake Gagne, the team has taken some of the torque away from him just so he can save the tires for the last couple of laps of the race. What they found yesterday was that they had taken away too much. He didn't have enough push off of the corners. So they gave some of that back to him today. See if he can use it at the end. And we've seen Zanetti go up underneath, Greg, down into turn 10. Zanetti goes up underneath Bobby Fong. So maybe he's got that spot now where he wants to try to pull away and you can see Ooh. Bobby looks up underneath him immediately but this would be okay for Bobby to see what he has got down the front straight away against this Ducati now just to close that chapter on what Jamie was saying it's exactly what Gagne told me this morning he said they had a little bit too much control over the torque in the middle of uh, getting off these corners uh, so they reduced that this morning it's giving him a little bit more power once he gets that bike upright Bobby Fong shaking his head he knows he didn't get a good drive onto the straightaway it might be something with the tires, possibly, it's hard to say at this point, but Bobby Fong not pleased with the last bit of that lap. Trying to hold on to Lorenzo Zanetti, the Italian, who comes over here at the ridge, had to go back to Italy, do some work for Ducati Corsa, who he works for, on loan here in the United States from Ducati. Gets on this new motorcycle from Warhorse HSBK Racing Ducati New York, a motorcycle they own. He now leads this race, the opportunity for Zanetti. He knew he had it yesterday, and now it's all up to Zanetti to stay mistake-free. He has got a fast motorcycle underneath him, and Jason, it sure looks like it turns really well. It's a lot better than it was yesterday. You can see Bobby trying to close off the entries of these turns to try to close that gap, pull that string a little bit tighter, and he's now going to see what he has. He's trying to make a plan of what he might be able to do going into the last lap. We've got about a lap and a half to go, and look now, Cameron Bobier is trying to roll around his teammates. He's not going to be able to make it there, but all these guys are closing up, and you can see Fong is really good out of here all weekend long. The, the Ducati went a little bit wide on the exit. See, the difference is that Zanetti knows exactly what Bobby Fong, his tendencies are on this racetrack, where Bobby Fong's learning that. You can see Bobby gets a run on Zanetti, and he's got to kind of roll off the throttle. How about this? Bobby could actually get a three-rider draft down this front straightaway. Cameron Bobby is not out of this race. He should be able to draft his teammate, Gagne, as they come down here, and they're getting the white flag this time through. Final lap for Zanetti. Can he hold off the advances of Bobby Fong? So desperate to win his third. Bobier goes into third spot. He's a little bit wide. Is Gagne going to get underneath him? So Cameron Bobier, who's either won a race or not finished at all, threatens a podium spot again, and he is so close for the win. But and, he, and he's really good. Oh, he's oh. dead sideways. That's going to take it away from him. I was going to say, Greg, he's really good through this fast left into the next left, but that bike was dead sideways on it. Bobby Fong now trying to think about doing something with Zanetti as they roll off into turn six. He's not going to be able to do it. This is where Fong was making straight lines out of all these lessons last time through. We've seen a Suzuki win. We've seen Yamaha wins. Are we going to see a Ducati stand on the top step of the podium? Bobby Fong, M4X star Suzuki, trying to prevent all that. Cameron Bobier trying to make up the time that he just lost. We're in the middle of the racetrack now in the infield straightaway. Bobier going sideways. You can see his body language. He wants to win this race as well, but he goes wide. Fong trying to find a way around. Fong has got to stay on the rear wheel of Zanetti coming out of the straightaway if he's got any chance. He or might try him here. Trying to rough him up and blow his drive. Bobby Fong side by side. He can't get it done. Wow, that was so close, Jason. Yeah, he's been really good out of there. Now, this is the interesting part. They've got to absolutely clean this last little section to have any chance of drafting that Ducati down the front straightaway. Bobby's opened it up really nicely. Here we go, onto the front straightaway. Zanetti goes into a tuck. It's GSXR horsepower. Zanetti to the line. Bobby Fong doesn't have it. It's going to be Lorenzo Zanetti with the win.
Wow! A Ducati on the top step of the podium. Zanetti, Fong, and Bobier. Welcome back to the U.S. Ducati Corsa. What a race by Lorenzo Zanetti. What a racer. 33-year-old Zanetti from Italy. Comes to the U.S. and wins. And how about this guy right here, Cameron Peterson, coming on to the front straightaway. And he will take seventh spot. The first of our stock 1,000 competitors in Hono Superbike. So it's Zanetti Fong, Bobier, Gagne, Elias, Heron, Cam Peterson. Travis Wyman comes across in eighth just ahead of Kyle Wyman. There have been some penalties assessed during the course of this race, Jason, for exceeding track limits. That'll be assessed to Kyle Wyman and to 55 Michael Gilbert, who comes in in 13th spot. Well, what do you have to say to that one, Jason? Great race. Best one of the year for us. I mean, we had essentially six super bikes up in the front the whole time through. We had a, four different brands, which was nice to see as well. I think that uh, Bobier is going to really come out swinging in this third race. Important thing for him is he was able to get ahead of his teammate, who is second in points. So that's going to help Cameron also. But, uh, you know, these guys threw everything they could. And on the last lap, uh, Zanetti was just a little bit too much for him. Not only, Jason, did we have six Ono super bikes up front, but they kept breaking the lap record over and over again for the race lap record. And Lorenzo Zanetti nearly, he was only two tenths off of what Cameron Bobier was able to do in free practice number three yesterday. A 136.6 is the outright fastest lap by Hono Superbike around Indianapolis Motor Speedway. In the race, it's gonna be 36.8 for Lorenzo Zanetti. Boy, if that doesn't convince some people to get this rider here to the United States to race in Moto America, I'm not sure what would. Warhorse, HSBK Racing, Ducati, New York. Yeah, and spare thought also for P.J. Jacobson, probably sitting at home and watching this. I don't know if, if P.J. is actually here, but he was injured earlier in the year, and uh, it would be great to see him on one of these bikes as well. And uh, we hope P.J. continues to get better. But big congratulations here to Lorenzo Zanetti. What a move. All right, we're going to step away. When we come back for this one, we're going to hear Zanetti. How did he do it? Well, it unfolds in front of your eyes. Can't wait to hear what the Italian has to say as he gets the winner interview when we return. by Dunlop, the official tire of the Moto America Championship Series. Lorenzo Zanetti on the top step of the podium. Jason Pridmore, we had four superbikes in Hono Superbike, race number two of the weekend, just half a second apart. Here's the margin of victory. Zanetti gets the victory over Bobby Fong by less than two tenths of a second. And then Bobier and Jake Gagne so Ducati Suzuki Yamaha, something we haven't seen in Moto America competition. Then Tony Elias with Josh Heron. So let's get right down to Hannah, who's with our winner, first time, Lorenzo Zanetti. Greg, he followed up yesterday's third place finish with his first ever Moto America victory, Lorenzo Zanetti. Lorenzo, after following Bobby Fong for so many laps, where were you looking for an opportunity to get around him to take the lead? Yeah, compared to yesterday, I tried just to keep calm. I see this morning on the warm-up, I have uh, improved uh, a little bit the bike compared to yesterday, so uh, things have the rhythm to, to try to win. But it's not easy because in half part of the race, I managed the tire well, but in the end, uh, I lose compared to uh, Bobby, so I tried just to go in front and did my rhythm because I struggled a bit on some corner. But anyway, that's arrived. I'm so happy for all. Special thanks to Ducati and the HSBK team and uh, Warhorse and Ducati New York to give me this unbelievable. If one month ago, when I'm rich and struggle, uh, I don't think to arrive on the victory quickly. So I'm, it's amazing and so happy. Thanks all. Thanks all to American American fans. Lorenzo Zanetti, today's race winner. Jamie. Well, Hannah, we saw as Bobby Fong came down the straight after that pass was made, we saw him shake his head after leading so much of this race, getting the win yesterday. Bobby, there's still one more to go. What will be your focus for race three? Um, you know, I, I felt like uh, I had a great bike underneath me. I felt like I hit my marks. And, uh, you know, I'm just going to keep doing me and just uh, 
you know, see what happens at the end of the race. I gave it my all, and you know, I had a great motorcycle underneath me. That M4S car Suzuki is making me look good. Congratulations on that podium. Thanks. Let's go back to Hannah. Place today goes to Cameron Bobier, and this is the first time this season we've seen you finish in a spot other than first. How were you able to fight your way to this great points haul? Yeah, it's uh, you know it's been a pretty crazy weekend so far. Uh, yeah, after yesterday, the the few crashes I've had this weekend, uh, it's it's been tough. We had a, a little uh, electrical malfunction there uh, in warm up. Thought we fixed it, and then uh, it happened again on a warm up lap. But uh, luckily, Richard uh, he gave me a good map that I could uh, get through the race pretty pretty strongly. So um, yeah, hats off to my monster, uh, you know, attack Yamaha guys. Um, man, uh, Lorenzo and Bobby were putting up a really good pace there uh, the whole race, and uh, man, they're they're going to be tough to beat uh, this afternoon. So uh, hats off to those guys. Uh, really, you know, really enjoying myself at this track. And uh, yeah, I got one more and I'm going to go get them. Cam, if you do finish on the podium in this second race today, you win the championship. Do you feel an added sense of pressure with that in mind? Um, yeah, you know, yes and no. Uh, definitely after picking my bike up three times this weekend, you know, it's a little bit in the back of my head. But uh, uh, yeah, just going to go out there and try to try to do my thing and ride free and uh, see what happens. Thanks, Cam. Congrats. So for Cameron Bobby, his first time standing on the podium where he wasn't on the top step. But there's more coming at you from Indianapolis Motor Speedway. When we return, don't want to miss it. Indianapolis Motor Speedway after Honos Superbike race number two of the weekend, race number one of today, because we have, well, we have two races Just today. today. Yeah, because yeah, we, we have three races yeah. total this weekend. Now, Jason, the top five in Honos Superbike were covered by 1.8 seconds. Josh Heron was sixth. He was only three and a half seconds back. Unbelievable. I mean, honestly, when you look at, we got a new winner today, but Heron, to me, put in one, one great effort and maybe even right of the day so far, right of the year for him so far. Yeah, and Hannah's with him right now. Another strong performance from Josh. You made some changes to the bike. Would you say that that's a step in the right direction for this afternoon's race? Yeah, for sure. We uh, we tried something to warm up, went softer on the front, ended up going a little stiffer than we were in the morning warm up, but still softer than the race yesterday. I've told Steve all year, if I can just get some confidence on the front end, I can kind of override what I think you know most people would ride it, uh, and it felt really good in the race. So we got that front end confidence. Now we just need to mess with electronics because we're getting yanked out of the corners. Wheelie control is really hurting us. We haven't been able to figure the sectors out all weekend, and so it's hard to adjust the wheelie control. So it's the same setting all around the track, and we're just getting killed on the front straight. So hopefully the second race is just as good. We got uh, only a little bit of time, so I'm going to make sure I get fueled up. Got my uh, fresh and lean. They just came out with a plant-friendly plant or plant-based uh, chicken meal, so I'm going to go, go uh, get fueled up in between the races and, and hopefully have a good one for the next one. Thanks, Josh. We'll Thanks. see you out there. All right, for us, we're going to be fueled up to come back after this one to Indianapolis Motor Speedway because our coverage continues in a moment. Wrapping up race one of the day, race two for the Honos Superbike races here at Photo America Superbikes at the Brickyard. What a spectacular race we had, so close out at the front. It's what we've been waiting for all season long, Jason, because Cameron Bobier has been so dominant. So my question to you is, when we look at Cameron Bobier, he finishes third, his first time not on the top step of the podium. Uh, anything like no. any problems you see anything down the <laughs> road for let, cam let's look big picture greg he's in a championship hunt at the end of the season right now he's been on the deck three times he didn't do a lap of practice this morning cam's fine let's take a look at those championship standings because that number one played cam's fifth in his career is sitting right out there so cam now has 86 over his teammate jay gagne so mathematically this is still a possibility matthew skoltz isn't here unfortunately he's out with injury so mathematically 
we have what, Jason, now four races left in the season, 25 per, per, per race, so only 100 points available. This is gonna be very, very interesting to see how this whole thing unfolds. We'll be back for race two of the Hono Superbike Series today at 3 p.m. Eastern. But coming up next is NASCAR Race Hub. You want to check that out. For Hanalopa, Jamie Howe and Jason Pridmore, I'm Greg White. Thanks so much. We'll see you at 3 o'clock.